ahead of today's video we're going to diagnose an issue i'm having with the furnace uh, i'll show you what it's doing and how we're going to fix it okay so the first thing we're going to do on our thermostat to uh, check if the thermostat's the issue is we're going to take off the cover and if you have a digital one go ahead and replace the batteries. Um, sometimes when the batteries are going out, it sends an intermittent signal and it can cause issues. Uh, after you do that, and it's still acting up, what you can do is jump these red and white wires and that'll kind of bypass the thermostat and send the signal to the furnace to run. Uh, to do that, you can either unscrew these and twist the wires together, or if you have like some alligator clips, uh, you can try and jump these, these two pieces or connect the two screws um, it's up to you how you do it. I am going to take off the uh, screws and just twist the wires together because I don't have an alligator clip with me. Before you do that, make sure your furnace is turned off at the switch at the furnace and make sure your heat and cold is uh, turned off so that you don't send some type of intermittent signal and, and power it up. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, show you those wires, and then uh, we'll head downstairs and check it out. All right, now that we got the red and white wires uh, twisted together that jumps and bypasses the thermostat and we'll go down downstairs turn it on and see what happens now that we know it's not the thermostat we're going to work on our furnace so to take this panel off on mine which is a lennox deluxe series all i have to do is put my hand in the handle lift straight up and the panel comes off when it comes off we'll see our furnace we have our main gas line here uh, this is the pump now uh, in, in here that uh, it turns, pulls it in, takes it. This little panel's normally up and this is screwed in. And if you look through this window and your furnace is firing, you'll see the flame through here. Um, now, if you take it down, you can kind of look in there. It's a lot of parts and pieces. Today, we're gonna replace this CAD cell. See if that fixes the issue. And if it doesn't, we're gonna replace this here, which is the relay and sends the power to everything. So to access this, CAD, uh, CAD eye, first we have to take this off because these yellow wires are what runs to it. So make sure your power is off. On mine, I have a switch right here and I just turn it off and I'm good to go. Um, so to take this guy off, we have two screws, one here and one over here. Um, just, you know, double check yours, make sure you don't have additional screws in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and take those off, but first, let's take these wires off and to do that it's just a phillips screwdriver and you just have to unscrew it enough to where you can get those wires off all right and those come right out so, and you see this little hole here, which we're gonna have to mess with to get those wires out. So we gotta take this one off and this one off with a flathead screwdriver or a uh, socket if you if you feel the need to use the socket. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and take those off and we'll start fishing that wire. All right, so all I did was loosen the screws. You don't actually have to take them all the way off. You see that's an angle and that one is straight. So you can actually just kind of rotate it and push it back and pull it up. And as you pull it up, we're gonna pull these wires out. All right, so we lean that forward. We can just pull these wires through. And we have them loose like that. So now when we get that cat eye out over here, we'll be able to pull this wire. You can kind of put your hand in there. You can feel it and it'll pull, it'll pull out. All right, so we got to loosen this screw here uh, using a straight, you know, standard screwdriver. We can really just loosen it up a little bit and it'll slide out. So slide that out. 
and then I'm going to gently pull these wires through. Um, you don't really, when it comes to electrical, you don't want to push and pull. You don't want to damage anything. So if you take a look in there, you can see the hole. And uh, I'm going to need both hands for this, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the camera while I work and fish that through. All right, so I got it all the way out. Uh, this is the old one. We're going to replace it with a new one. Uh, this part was, uh, I think it was $28 on Supply House. And uh, I was able to get it like within a day or two. Um, now, it is possible that you could clean this. And uh, that would fix your issue if this is the cat eye. But for 28 bucks, I'm just going to go ahead and replace this whole thing with a new one. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and unpack that. Uh, I have it right here. Uh, and we'll unpack it and we'll get it ready to, uh, to go in. All right, so you open up the bag and there is the new piece. Uh, it's got these little wire connectors that I'm not going to need for mine. And it comes with a bunch of different brackets. Um, now looking through this bag, I don't have one that fits this old bracket. Um, but what you can do is if you're able, you can pull this right out. And I'm going to put it right into the new one. So now the bracket fits. Now there is, like, this part pulls out and it's a cell. You can get new ones of these and put them in. Uh, but the HVAC guy I was talking to said to just replace the whole thing because it's not that expensive of a part. So we're going to move back to the furnace and we're going to install our new cat eye on there. And if you look at the two, you can see there's a huge difference. So it wouldn't surprise me if it's the cat eye cell, uh, but we'll know for sure here uh, in a few minutes. So the install is going to be uh, basically the exact opposite of taking it out, right? So we're going to start, we're going to fish this wire through the uh, hole on the side here. So you might have to get up and close. I can see it there. And we're through. So now, there's my wire. I don't want to get it all jumbled up in here. So if you take it and you give it a little bit of a bend, you just kind of push the new one through. You just kind of keep bending it up. All right, so I'm gonna work that through, get it all the way in, and then we'll get it all connected. All right, now that we got that most of the way through, all right, we take it, we're gonna have to bend it around just a smidge. We'll get it into place, just how it was. A little turn, and let's tighten it into place with our screw. And we're in and all set. So I'm just gonna bend this wire around a little bit so it skirts the edge here and it's out of the way of everything else. All right, so we're all set up in here. Uh, we can actually close this lid and using the Phillips side of the screwdriver. Go ahead and tighten that in. And hopefully we don't need access into there for a long, long time. All right, so we come to our box here. This is our relay, which we might have to replace later. We'll have to kind of wait and see. And that is gonna, a big jumble of wires. So let me get some stuff figured out here. All right. So, Kind of squash wires down. This piece was going through this hole. So that's our next fishing point. So this is a long wire. You can cut it down if you want to. You don't have to. Um, I'm not going to, but we'll just fish this through. pieces and we'll tighten those screws down once you get them all lined up. So let's get it into place. That one and here's the other 
corner. All right, so there's that part. So now, like I said, you could trim this wire down if you want. Um, I'm choosing not to in, in my case, no specific reason, just no reason not to. So I'm just gonna kinda bend it down here with these other wires. Maybe get a little bit of a coil. And then we're going to, we're gonna end, pull these apart just a little bit. And then you can bend these. And we hook them on the two screws, the two F screws. It's kind of hard to do holding the camera with all this with one hand. So, yeah, I think you get the idea. Just got to hook that and then tighten it in. Tighten that one, then we'll hook that one to tighten that up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll give this thing a test. All right, so our cat eye is replaced. Um, I'm gonna get some zip ties to kind of clean this up a little bit so it's not looking that bad. Um, but like I said, trim it up if you want, um, it's up to you. So with that being replaced, our sensor or relay being on, uh, I have the thermostat is already jumped as we did earlier. So all I gotta do is flip the switch and let's see what happens. is on and so we're gonna let this go for a little bit it's not doing the, uh, the on off thing that it was previously so that's a good sign uh, but we'll give this some time um, let it go five ten minutes I'm gonna be kind of watching it and watching the temperature and we will see if this was the fix all right it's been about a uh, half hour or 45 minutes and uh, the furnace is pretty running great uh, it's getting up the temperature uh, I went ahead and turned the furnace off, redid the uh, thermostat, so uh, it's you know, screwed back into the right things and everything's set up. So looks like my issue was that uh, cat eye uh, and replacing it, $28 part, uh, and we're good to go. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave those in the comments below. Hit like, subscribe, and all that, and we will talk to you later.